Hello and welcome to part 2 of this tutorial on how to create a full stack website using MongoDB, Express, React, and Node. In this part we'll get the backend running and show the site in Google Chrome. So let's get started. Inside our package.json file for the backend, we're going to make a few new scripts. We already have a test script, so we'll rename this to start and with Node we want to run our backend. The next script is server, which will run our backend server with Nodemon. Nodemon will restart our server whenever we save changes. Add a client script, which will run the front-end server. We'll run npm start, but we want to run that command inside the front-end. To do that, we use dash dash prefix front-end. The last script we'll add is dev where we'll use concurrently to run both the client and server at the same time. You escape the next character in strings by using a backslash. We need to do that a few times with this script to keep it all inside one string. Now to create the server. So go to our backend folder and create a server.js file. We'll come back to this later. For now, we need to go to our package.json file inside the frontend and add a proxy so our frontend knows where to find our backend. Now go back to our server. We need to bring in Express using the basic JavaScript require syntax. There is a way to use the import from syntax when in the backend, but I won't be showing that, so for now just stick with require. We also need .env, but we won't be using it as a constant in the server. We just need to access our environment variables, so run the config function from .env. We'll need path, which is a default JavaScript package. Now create an app constant and set that to express. To connect to MongoDB, we're going to create a separate helper function. So inside the backend, create a config folder, then create a db.js file. Bring in Mongoose. Now create an asynchronous arrow function named connectdb. We need async in front of the arrow function so we can use the newer await syntax instead of .then. Create a try catch block, and inside of the try, we're going to await for mongoose to connect, and we'll input process.env.mongo underscore uri. We don't have that variable yet, but we'll create it soon. The second parameter we pass into the connect function will be an object with some mongoose information. Set use new URL parser to true. Then do the same with use unified topology and use create index. If we don't pass these in, we'll get some warnings and it might not work. Once that's done, we'll console.log mongodb connected. Inside the catch, run a console.error with the error.message, and then process.exit with code 1. Exit code 1 means the process failed with an error. Now set our module.exports equal to the connectdb function. Back inside our server, run ConnectDB, which Visual Studio should require for us automatically. Now that we have the function to connect, we need to create our database. We'll use a database off mongodb.com, so just Google MongoDB login. If you don't have an account, just sign up, they're free. 
Once you're signed in, it should ask you to create a cluster, which is basically a database. I'm going to create a new project so I can also create a new cluster. So you'll see we have access to shared clusters, which are free. I won't change any of the basic cluster information because I want to stay with the free version. Once you create the cluster, it might take around 10 to 15 minutes for it to be ready. When it's done setting up, we need to create a new user. So click on connect then fill in the username and password. Don't forget the password because we'll need it in a second. We also need to establish what IP addresses can connect to the database. For now, I'm going to click allow access from anywhere because this is just a tutorial, but you might want to limit this to your IP. Once you have a user and added your IP address, Click choose a connection method and then connect to your application. It will give us our Mongo URI, so click on copy and then open up our .env file in Visual Studio. Now create a Mongo underscore URI variable and set that equal to what we just copied. Right here where it says password inside of the angle brackets. You want to replace that with the password you created when we were connecting to Mongo. Now our ConnectDB function should work fine, so go back to server.js. At the bottom, run app.use and pass in express.json with an object as the parameter and set extended to false. You might get some warnings if you don't. We want to define our routes later, so for now just create a routes folder in the back end. We'll also need to create some middleware, so create a middleware folder. Now, still inside of our server, create a port constant and set that equal to process.env.port. Or if it can't be found, pass a default of 5000. Now run app.listen with the first parameter being our port constant and the second parameter being a callback that runs when the server is started. Our callback will be an arrow function that logs a template string to the console, which displays the port number. Inside our .env file, create the port variable. Let's start creating our server middleware. Inside of our middleware folder, we'll create a file named errormiddleware.js. Create a not found arrow function with request, response, and next as the three parameters. Inside the function body, set an error constant equal to a new error. For this, we'll use a template string and we'll display not found with the URL that can't be found. Send a res.status of 404 and then call next with error as the parameter. Now create an error handler function. We'll need four parameters, error, request, response, and next. 
Now inside of the function body, create a status code constant, and with this we need to do a ternary check. So if the response.status code is equal to 200, we're going to change it to 500, else we'll just return status code. Next, do res.status with our status code constant as the parameter. We also want to send some JSON with the response, and we'll create an object as the parameter. Now set message to the error.message, and stack to a ternary check where we see if the node environment is set to production. If it is, we'll return null for the stack, else we return error.stack. Now set our module.exports to an object with those two functions we created. Go back to our server.js file and bring in our middleware. Then down under the routes, we'll app.use our not found middleware. I'm going to start up the server now just to check for any errors. So when I wrote this bug in, I put something up on the screen showing you the correct way to do it. If you didn't catch that, just fix it now. Inside of our db.js file, process is spelled wrong. Now that we have no more bugs, we'll move on to our app.js file inside the front end. I like the arrow function syntax better than this default function right here, so I'll switch that really quick. And now we need our imports, so bring in React from React. And then inside braces, we'll bring in browser router, switch, and route from React Router DOM. I'll change this div inside the return to a React fragment, and then our first component will be the browser router. Next we need to add switch, and then we can add our routes. Your app needs to be wrapped in the browser router so you can use routes, and you need switch to change between them. When you create a route and tell it what component to display, it will show that component on every screen. To show a component on one specific route, you need to set exact to true, which we can do by passing exact and then give it a path. Our first route will be home screen, so import home screen from our screens folder. We'll also add a route for our login screen, so import login screen. Copy this home screen route. For the home screen, the path is just a slash. For login screen, it will be slash login. And the component will be login screen. We have our backend in place our routes, and our app set up, so I'll run our dev script and see if it works. I messed up on the React Router DOM import, so just make sure you get this right with the dash in between. 
I'll start it one more time and our app should pop up in Google Chrome.